Patton Oswalt's life was upended in 2016 when his wife, Michelle McNamara, unexpectedly died. Suddenly, in his late 40s, he found himself a widower and a single dad. One thing that helped him survive and move on is finding love again. We met for dinner and we looked at each other, and that was it. Patton Oswalt first laid eyes on Michelle McNamara after performing at a club in Los Angeles. During his routine, Patton admitted to his weaknesses for Irish women. Irish girls are my kryptonite. After the show, she was walking out with the crowd and she touched his left arm and said, Irish girls, nice. The actor hilariously explained that while he was so stunned by how beautiful she was that he let her walk away, a friend of his urged him to go talk to her. It was love pretty much immediately for me. I think it took a few months for her, Patton further revealed. But the first word I said to my future wife was, hey, I shouted it from 30 feet away, which that's mm, uh, romance. But it must have turned to love pretty solidly because by September she'd moved in with me. Oswald and McNamara got married in 2005. I'm meeting someone that's calling me on my nonsense and bringing me back down to earth and it was, you know, it, it just, it was so exhilarating. And together they shared a daughter, Alice, who was born four years later. In 2016, Michelle worked tirelessly on her book about the Golden State Killer, who had not been identified or captured at the time. She was investigating the cold case of the worst uncaught serial killer in the state of California. The 30-year-old cold case consumed Michelle, who had made it her life's mission to find and bring to justice the men responsible for such horrific things that upended the lives of many. Original Night Stalker. This suspect has had a lot of nicknames. Now we know him, of course, as the Golden State Killer. That name was coined by the late author, Michelle McNamara, in her bestseller, I'll Be Gone in the Dark. The stress from obsessing over the case and working on her book gave McNamara trouble sleeping. And the night before her untimely death, Patton had suggested she needed rest. Sleep until you wake up, he told her, and she took a Xanax and went to bed. Shockingly, she never woke up. The autopsy revealed the 46-year-old had a condition that causes blockages in her arteries. It's believed the combination of this condition and several prescription drugs in her system caused her heart to stop. Full of dread, Oswald told Alice the next day, I looked at my daughter and destroyed her world, he recounted. I had to look at this little girl that was everything to me and take everything from her. After McNamara's sudden death, Oswald was devastated. I just did absolutely had no idea what to do next. He was navigating loss along with being a newly single dad to their daughter, Alice. I'm the best memory of my mom. Not anything that I'm gonna have, I'm the best memory. The comedian has said that without his little girl, he might not have dealt with his grief as gracefully as she has. I would have just eaten to live and then would have drunk so that I didn't have to feel anything anymore and then would have repeated it every single day. Having Alice was like, I gotta get up. I gotta make breakfast. I gotta take care of this little life, he said. In June 2020, the Goldberg star opened up about how he and Alice have coped with their grief since McNamara's death. We just were very, very honest about. Here's how I'm feeling, he said. The actor went out of his way to deal with himself and just be there as a symbol of strength and happiness for her. I made sure that a lot of my darkness and sadness I went through without her seeing it, only because she's already suffered this blow by losing her mom, he explained. Oswald also expressed gratitude for grief, suggesting that it overpowered his depression and instead forced him to look at the bigger picture. Thanks, grief. Thanks for making depression look like the buzzing little bully it always was, he wrote. In April 2017, a year after her death, Oswald shared an emotional tribute to McNamara and removed his wedding ring in a symbolic gesture. I'm a widower. I'm a widower. And, and like, if I put it in really basic terms, I'm like every bad 80s sitcom where they there's a dad raising a kid by himself and the mom is somehow, except my 80s sitcom sucks. Removing the ring was removing the last symbol of denial of who I was now and what my life is and what my responsibilities are. But it's not fatal, he wrote. And he has been further helped through his grief by finding love again with his now wife, Meredith Salinger. Oswald and Salinger met over Facebook as a result of a dinner party invite that they both couldn't attend. The relationship blossomed into messaging back and forth every day for three months until finally meeting in person, by which point they had already fallen for each other. We did all of the deep stuff you do after you have the first date. So by the time we met on our first date, we were so, I mean, I was so head over heels. I got to know what an extraordinary human being she was. So it was just a no-brainer for me to know that this is the person that I want to be with. 
he told Us Weekly. As it turns out, Meredith and Michelle had several friends in common, and as she learned more about her, she felt a closeness to her. Finding out about Michelle made me love Patton even more, Meredith told People. That was something that made me think more highly of Patton, because he loved a girl that was like us, me and my friends. According to Salinger, her friends suggested that Michelle orchestrated that from heaven. She asked herself, who would be the best woman to raise Alice? And she picked you. And then, who would Patton love? You. By July 2017, Patton and Meredith were engaged. The couple tied the knot four months later. It felt like coming home, Oswald said at the time. Actor Martha Plimpton, whose dinner would have been their first meeting, officiated the wedding. Salinger has been vocal on Twitter in support of causes she cares about, as well as fiercely supportive of her husband, his late wife, and her stepdaughter. In a recent comedy special, Oswald called Salinger a poem of a woman. He's also raved about her as a stepmom to Alice, saying, She's just an example of the kind of woman I want Alice to grow up to be. After the couple went public with their romance, they faced some criticism on social media, with some questioning how Oswald could move on so quickly after the death of his wife. In response to the backlash about his relationship timeline, he told The Guardian, I feel like I'm only living this life. I don't owe anyone else anything else. Oswald's words have helped to squash the questions about how he chose to cope with his loss. He cited that Salinger helped him and his daughter during a dark time rather than erasing his first wife's memory. The pushback I got was from anonymous people on the internet. With 90% of internet pushback, it's not anybody actually morally outraged at anything. They're just bored, Patton said. Salinger responded, explaining that they had the support of McNamara's family and friends. I think for Patton, having met and found love after over a year of intense therapy and openly grieving and dealing with his pain, I am grateful to be the one who helps him climb out of the depths of grief and find some joy again. And most of all, Alice is happy and feels loved. Loving Meredith doesn't change or diminish the love he feels for his first wife, and it likely helps that he found love with someone who embraces and honors the memory of his first wife. When Michelle was Alice's mom, Alice was still a little kid, he told Kevin Nealon in an episode of Hiking with Kevin on YouTube. Now Alice is 10 and both Meredith and I are like, you have responsibilities, you have some chores, we're treating her like a 10 year old. The comedian and actor acknowledged that Alice sometimes tries to play her two moms off each other. There's been times where she goes, with mommy I didn't have to do this, he explained. He went on, well that's because you were five and if mommy were here you'd be doing all the same stuff, probably even more. For the two years that followed her death, Oswald made it his mission to ensure that her book was released. Just days after the fourth anniversary of McNamara's death, the case was solved. Joseph James D'Angelo was finally identified as the Golden State Killer and arrested after 42 years of investigating. This was thanks in large part to McNamara's linking of the crimes and persistent attention to the case. Her book, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, was posthumously published and inspired the eponymous HBO documentary, which features interviews with survivors and follows McNamara's investigation. Thank you all for uh, the, uh, all the support on Twitter. You did it, Michelle. Even though the cops are never going to say it, but your book helped get this thing closed. Oswald delivered a copy to her gravesite after it was published and shared a photo on Twitter. You did it, baby. The book is excellent, the writing brilliant. You tried to bring kindness to chaos, which was your way, he wrote at the time. She was a very logical person with a lot of compassion, Oswald told Entertainment Weekly back in 2018. When she saw someone act with such cruelty, the logic part of her brain would kick in and go, well, that kind of cruelty should be met with justice, and there should be someone to answer for the victims. In an Instagram post on the fifth anniversary of McNamara's death, Oswald discussed how the day made him think of his late wife how her death shaped their daughter Alice, and how he and Alice have helped each other cope with their loss. He added, Meredith swooped into our lonely, broken lives and helped put the pieces back together, stronger and sleeker than they were before. Ultimately, coping with grief and tragedy is different for everyone, and what matters most is finding a way to have joy again. Every, every bit of growth that I've had in my career, especially in my writing and in my performing, came because I met Michelle McNamara. Oswald and Salinger's love brought joy for them and for Alice. As time passes, the three continue honoring McNamara's amazing legacy. In Oswald's words, the anniversary of McNamara's death gets a little less dark every year when I see how Alice, a living piece of Michelle safe in the hands of Meredith, keeps walking in light. Be well and be kind.